What's up everybody? Mike with this old hot rod. Appreciate you guys coming back watching another episode of this old hot rod. On today's episode we're going to be working on the Model A chassis. Now let me move to this side so you can see it. You can see here I got my frame table. So I just want to make a, just a quick note before we get into I'll show you guys. I'll explain to you how I set it up. Oh there's two different processes let's say when you're working with a frame table. The first process is setting up the frame table as a jig to build a new frame. There's a lot more steps involved in that process and those steps are what included are finding your center line, making sure that once the frame rails are on the frame table everything's level, they're square, figuring out your widths for your cross members, your front, your rear, your transmission, your suspension, brackets, whatever. Uh, there's a lot more critical measurements that you need to make when you're setting up a frame table or you're setting up a jig on a frame table and a lot of times what guys will do is they'll start with a known square frame a good frame and then they'll then build their next frame off of the jig that they will that they used off of the original frame as a template the situation that I'm doing now is I am using my frame table not necessarily as a jig but as a clamp or a clamping table or a clamping surface. Uh, the reason why, and a lot of you guys know, I explained it on the last video, the reason why I'm doing this is during the welding process of welding the boxing plates onto this frame, I don't want the frame to twist as it's cooling. So in order to eliminate that or to minimize the risk of that happening, you clamp the frame to a frame table or something along that line. Uh, the process that I'm using my frame table for is the process of using the table and the stanchions as a clamp to hold the frame. So while I'm welding it, so the first thing I did was to roll the table into the garage. The next step was to drop these feet down and get these feet planted on the, on the concrete to level the actual frame table. I bought this frame table years ago and I was told it had built hundreds of chassis over its lifetime. Uh, I don't know if the frame's a little bit, uh, the, the floor's a little bit out, the table's a little bit out, but I ended up just putting these pads down on this particular side of the, fr of, of the frame table and just lifted it up, but only about an eighth of an inch. So once I got the table level, so basically all I did, I took a piece of box tubing, took a level, put my level on the box tube and made sure that my frame table was level. Once I got my table completely level, front to back, to the table. So what I ended up doing is I took, I had a couple pieces of box tubing sitting outside on my, on my metal rack. I cut it down to the width I needed, about 36 inches, and then just welded it to the table at the location of the front cross member, at the middle cross member, and then the rear cross member. There's a lot of information online that kind of tells you how to um, you know clamp your frame to the table sometimes you can take your frame itself and clamp it directly to the table I couldn't do that in this case because of my wishbone mounts my wishbone mounts unfortunately hit the table itself so I ended up having to just raise it up a little bit and that's fine it kinda helps when you're working on the frame so once I ended up getting these in place this one here this one in the middle at the suspension cross member and then one at the rear cross member I then just simply cut stanchions 12 inches tall some other pieces that went sideways you can see this little piece right here you can see this little piece right here just a little three-quarter inch piece of box tubing what I did was this particular this stand right here, I let my buddy Joe use this table and he set his 32 Roadster chassis up on this table. And this stand was one of the stands that he fabricated for his frame when he was building his frame. And he actually used the table as a frame jig. I ended up just retaining this piece. It fit perfectly on the inside of the frame rails right at the suspension cross member. So what I did was I just I tacked it to the frame table, set the frame on top of the frame table. My, my son helped me pick it up and lift it up. I ended up setting the frame on the middle mount, this mount here. I lifted the nose of the frame up, got it to a point where I was happy with it. I had already cut these stanchions down and tacked them in place right on the outside edge of the frame rail. All I did was lift the frame up and then I just took my clamp 
and I just, I just clamp the frame to my stanchion. One on this side and one on the driver's side. I put my piece of metal across the top of it with my level and made sure the front of the frame was level. As soon as it was level and I knew it was good, I then ended up with the frame still clamped. I'm moving this just so you can see. With the frame still clamped in place, I just added these little three quarter inch box tubes underneath the chassis to hold the chassis up. Once these stands were good and welded in place, I got my little box tube welded in place to hold the chassis up. I clamped it this way. Well, I ended up taking it. I took these clamps off because these are really strong clamps. I ended up clamping it to the little piece of three quarter inch box tube clamped it that way so it wouldn't lift up and then I clamped it this way so the frame wouldn't pull in I did that on both sides now when I double check my frame making sure I don't put my piece of metal on any of the tack welds or the little the little nubs on the boxing plates I just check my level as long as the frame's level, I know I'm good here. And I did the same thing on the back. The exact same process on the back. And I'll take you in the back to show you. All right, so I already had, so I have my middle already set in place. My front set in place. Now it was time to do the back. And I did the exact same thing on the back. This frame was already up in the air because I already had it sitting at the middle cross member and clamped in the front on the nose, on the frame, in front of the frame rails. I already had this piece sitting on the frame table. I already had it welded to the frame table here, one on both sides. I simply, once this frame rear was up, I cut these verticals and just set them up next to the frame, welded them on the bottom. I took my one inch box tube, a three quarter inch box tube. I put it up underneath, clamped it to the frame rail, and then just welded it in place. So now, at this point, I have a clamping surface on the back on both sides, a clamping surface on the front on both sides of the cross member, on both sides of the frame. And in the middle, I ended up just welding it. So you can see I just got three tack welds here on the top of the frame. Well, I ended up burning through the tube because I had it, my welder turned up. But I just welded it here and welded it across the top. The reason why I welded it in these locations, because I, I know I have easy access to those with a cutoff wheel. So I can just zip those tack welds real quick and then the frame, once I undo my clamps, I'll be able to flip the frame over. So that's kind of a quick overview of how I set up my frame table. And again, I just want to reiterate, it's a completely different process when you're setting up a frame table as a clamping solution or a clamping station versus an actual frame jig. This, this table now is not necessarily set up as a frame jig, but if I were to take measurements to make sure that this frame is exactly square, which it should be, it didn't really seem to have any damage on it. All of the uh, original cross members were still in the frame, minus the, the frame being Z'd on the rear. If I were to take a completely bone stock, beautiful Model A chassis, I would essentially do the exact same process that I did, setting up my stanchions, one on the front, one in the middle, and one in the back. There are some holes on a lot of these Model A chassis you could use as locating holes or locating pins to bolt to a frame jig to make sure that every frame you build moving forwards will be the exact same frame if you're buying an aftermarket frame rail or something like that. But again, that's not really the case with this particular frame. Um, I just need a, I need a surface to clamp the frame to to make sure that the frame isn't going to twist during the welding process. It's a quick overview of how I clamped my frame to the table. So before I, before I remove the frame off the frame table, off of these stanchions, I still need to modify my transmission cross member. So I'll make sure I do that while the frame is clamped and welded onto the table. I have my locating holes, so it should still be pretty easy. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna narrow the mount. It should go pretty quick, and um, that'll be it. Like I said, just finished up the welding process. I'm gonna get right into the welding. It's Sunday afternoon. It is Easter Sunday. I only have a couple hours that I can spend in the garage, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do the best I can with the time that I have. I'm gonna start the process today, but I'm most likely not gonna finish it today. I'm gonna finish up the rest of the welding, hopefully during the week, this week after work. This is kind of the hard part. 
the next part is just simply just welding so it's just going to take some time and uh, you know going to speed up the process so you guys don't get bored and uh, put some music on in my ears I'm just going to get to welding so let's get to work now with the frame being sandblasted I'm hoping that the frame welds up nice it'll certainly be better than what it would have been if I hadn't sandblasted it so to all those people that said I should box the frame here you go box on the frame and it was the right thing to do and I appreciate the the nudge to do it uh, there was a lot of people that had recommended it and you guys were right I, I should have considered doing it long before but I had uh, I had other plans I guess So basically what I'm doing, you guys can see what I'm doing, I'm just doing kind of some areas, welding for about 15-20 minutes, and then I'm stopping, I'm taking a break, and obviously you guys see I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit, I'm doing kind of areas, I'm doing the front section first, then I'm bouncing to the back section. I'm getting pretty close to having the top portion welded, I probably have 10% left on the top, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld up the motor mounts to the boxing plate and uh, probably weld the boxing plate to the front cross member where that attaches. Uh, so I'll get all that done. I got most of the fish plates on the back of the frame done. So I'll finish up the remainder of those. I have a little bit of welding where the stanchions are on the rear suspension cross member or the mount. So once I get the frame off of the stanchions, I'll just probably slide it forwards a little bit and then I'll just get these little bit of areas welded up. Uh, but once that's done, I think what I'm going to do next, like I said, I'm going to box in around the steering box to kind of encapsulate the frame tubes. And then I'm going to get to work on my cross member for the transmission. So basically I'm just going to make some measurements. I'm going to just section it, shorten it, get it set back in place, get it tack welded, and then uh, get it finished welded while everything's on the jig or while everything's still mounted to the table. Pretty straightforward process once you get the chassis mounted to the table and once the stand you get your stanchions or your stands built uh, it's just you you just essentially creating something to clamp the frame to uh, and a lot of the work was building the stanchions and even then it's just simple cuts simple measurements something horizontal something vertical and then something to clamp the frame to to let the frame sit on it and make sure it's level so as long as you're level you get it clamped and you just start welding so I'm doing sections of weld two or three inches at a time, not much more than that. And then I'm uh, just kind of bouncing around. So, so it's going pretty quick. All right, let's get back to welding. Just wanted to take a beverage break. Sam Adams is the sponsor of today's video. They don't know it, but they are. All right, I'm wearing my, my respirator. Because even though the frame was sandblasted, I hit it with a wire wheel. There's still some stuff coming out of the frame. You know, so I'm just wearing my respirator just to be safe. You see a lot of smoke, you know that's contamination in the middle. So I'm trying to do my best to protect myself.
All right, everyone, that's gonna be it for me for a little while. I think I'm gonna run in the house, get it cleaned up real quick. It's kind of smoky in here, so I'm gonna open up the door. It's tough to film while the door's open because the sunlight screws up with the, uh, screws the camera up. So I got the entire top, both sides of the frame rail done. I got the, the, the areas where the boxing plates meet themselves. I got around the motor mounts welded up. So I'm gonna let the frame cool down for the rest of the day. Tomorrow after work, what I'll do is I'll come home, I'll flap disc everything. I will then do the plate, the boxing plates on either side of the steering box to kind of finish off that area. I will section the uh, transmission cross member. I'll get that all welded in place while the frame's still tacked and uh, clamped to the table. Once that's all done, I'll flip the frame over and I'll get it reconnected to the table, whether it's tack welds or clamps. And then I'll get all the underside of the frame all set and taken care of. Get that all welded. Once that's done, I'll get everything just flap disked, cleaned up, and ready for primer and paint. So, and um, yeah, kind of that's going to be basically it. So hopefully in the next week sometime, this thing will be all bolted back together, rolled outside, and it'll have a for sale sign on it. Uh, I did have a gentleman that was interested in the car. He was really interested. Uh, unfortunately, that, that isn't going to work out, and truthfully, it's on me. Uh, the reason being is uh, he's an older gentleman. He's got some health concerns. I'm not going to go into details, but he's unable to do some of the work that needed to be done on the car to finish the car. So kind of part of the deal was he wanted me to finish the car or a certain percentage of it and um, just tr really trying to stick to my game plan of piecing the car together as a project and moving it along. I needed to stay on that course. I've already gone way past and way over and above where I thought it would be as you guys know. I mentioned that in other videos. Uh, so uh, he wanted the car chopped, he wanted the roof filled, um, wanted some different suspension work done on the front of the car um, and there was just a lot. There was a lot and uh, again I'm not going to go into details but it was just a lot of things that I really was not interested in doing. The gentleman's name is Peter. Peter, I hope you understand. It was a difficult conversation we had that day. Uh, I felt bad telling you I wasn't going to be able to fulfill some of the things that you, you needed or wanted done on the car. So I offered the car as it sits when I'm done, but it really wasn't what he wanted. Uh, he wanted, like I said, some additional work done. and. Uh, Unfortunately, it just didn't work out. So that being said, the car is for sale. Uh, it will be for sale locally very soon within the next week. Uh, it will be for sale on Facebook Marketplace. I'll post it up on Instagram. I'll try to go through all the boxes and take photos of everything that needs to be done. Maybe do a video. On so that. that'll be it. Uh, and, and the thing will be rolled outside. I'm really looking forward to getting the, the Model T back in here. I got to get the roof bows modified to fit. There, it's a Universal 32 Ford Roadster roof bow kit. Um, so that, that car will come back in here. I'll get that done. I want to get the top done on it. That's coming up really soon. I want to make sure I have that car all situated and, and set up and ready to go for Northeast Vintage Drags. That's something else we'll talk about in an upcoming video. I don't want to ramble on a lot on this video. This was just a quick, quick video of, of uh, welding up the chassis. Thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned. Uh, a lot more things coming up real soon in the future on this old hot rod. See you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.